Cooper changes feet and Georgia is crowned the national champion for the first time in 41 years. Georgia's 41 year title drought ended as the SEC's dominance continued. Three different SEC programs have won the last three national titles. And while the dogs lost a record amount of players in the NFL draft, they have three more potential top 10 picks on defense, along with quarterback Stetson Bennett, who returns after a career defining performance in the national championship game. I'm certainly glad that we won it. I'm glad we won it for our fans, but I'm focused on forward. You know, I'm looking like in there, not in the rearview mirror, looking out the windshield right ahead. But the favorites in the SEC reside in Tuscaloosa. Big surprise. The Crimson Tide appear ready to make another run at a national title behind Heisman Trophy winner Bryce Young and superstar edge rusher Will Anderson. Perhaps the two best players in all of college football, coached by the greatest coach in college football history. I thought we had a good spring. We had a lot of guys make a lot of progress. I think we know what we need to do. But Texas A&M may have had the best offseason as Jimbo Fisher signed the highest ranked recruiting class in college football history. Might that be enough for the Aggies to finally supplant Alabama in the SEC West? We'll get a much better idea early in the season, October the 8th, when the Aggies and Tide meet up in Tuscaloosa following A&M's stunning upset last season. In Gainesville, the Gators hope to have the breakout player in the SEC as quarterback Anthony Richardson tries to take his game to the next level under new head coach Billy Napier. Nice wall, big dog. Hey, right here, Anthony. Good. Good. Atta boy. Good. And in Baton Rouge, the Brian Kelly era begins with much anticipated fanfare and high expectations. We know it's hard work. We know there's great teams in the SEC. We respect them. But this is LSU. Go Tigers! The rich get richer, and the SEC just keeps getting better. Storylines aplenty as the conference goes for a fourth straight national title. You know, when we wrote that, we had Chris voice it. We had no idea of the future and the drama to come in the SEC. Uh, Brady Quinn back with us. Let's welcome in college football expert Barrett Sali here. All right, guys, let's start with Alabama. They are the favorite to win the SEC. They're the favorite to win the whole shebang here. Uh, but the SEC specifically at minus 140. Brady, you agree with that? Yeah, look, they're the favorite. If you want to lay a futures bet, I'm all for laying some money on Alabama. There's nothing like an Alabama team that feels like who a team they beat in the SEC championship game end up losing to in the national championship feels like it's going to be scorched earth this season for the SEC with Nick Saban and his uh, returning Heisman Trophy winner Bryce Young and as we talked about during the preview Will Anderson who may be the overall best player in college football but it's also what they did in the transfer portal when you pick up a guy like Jermaine Burton who along with the rest of their weapons on the outside and Jojo Earl and Ja'Cory Brooks, those guys can all take the top off of the defense. And we know big plays have been part of the formula for success, but don't forget about Jameer Gibbs, who they get from Georgia Tech as well. He'll add that dynamic ability that they really didn't have last year in the backfield to go along with all the other talent that this team possesses. So rightfully so, they should be the top of the SEC. And I think they will be when it's all said and done, Barrett. Yeah, Brady, I agree. I mean, Occam's razor, right? The simplest solution is the right one. You're starting out with the two best players in college football and Bryce Young and Will Anderson. You have the best roster or second best roster, depending on what happens with the transfer portal from here on out. Nick Saban has done a great job supplementing that roster, filling those holes. I think when you look at Jameer Gibbs, he might have the best season of any running back in college football this season. And so, yeah, I think you have to go with Alabama. No disrespect to Georgia. I think Georgia is going to be just fine, but... Stetson Bennett, not necessarily a liability at quarterback, but Bryce Young is a difference maker. And then defensively with all the players that got drafted from Georgia, it's hard to imagine them consistently keeping teams behind the chains, at least as well as much as they did last year. So, yeah, I'm rolling with the Crimson Tide this year. I think uh, it's they're, they're the favorites for a reason. Those big buildings out in the desert weren't built on bad lines. All right, let's talk about the playoff then, Brady. I assume Alabama will be there for oh, yeah. you. Uh, walk us through who you have making it to the playoff and any surprise teams. Uh, Alabama, Ohio State are, are the top two, in my opinion, based on the quarterbacks, what they have coming back. But I threw in Georgia in there in part because, look, Kirby Smart's done a tremendous job in recruiting, and I think they do 
have some depth there. You've got a quarterback in Stetson Bennett who he may not wow you, but when he needed to most, he stepped up in some big spots in the national championship game. And so I think they're up for the task. And so let's just call it the loser of that SEC championship game. Potentially still gets in. What about your Oklahoma Sooners? 35 to 1 odds. <laughs> Look, I'm just not win. buying in yet to the Texas hype. You know, is Texas back? Are we going to ask ourselves this every single year? So I, I, I got to see it to believe it. I think Brent Venables has done a good job of providing a little more energy into that program. You hear the players talking about it. Don't uh, sleep on Dylan Gabriel either, the quarterback. So I like Oklahoma through a clear path through the Big 12 to find its way into the college football playoff. I was surprised when I saw that. I'm not angry about it. I appreciate you. For, <laughs> I very much appreciate it. Uh, Barrett, give us yours. I, I don't think Oklahoma made the cut, no, though. No. No, it didn't. But, I mean, good job by Brady not buying into the Texas hype. Nobody should buy into the Texas hype and say that Texas is back until Texas actually hoists the college football playoff trophy. Then Texas will actually be back. But like Brady, I've got Alabama 1, Ohio State 2, uh, Georgia number 3. I think they'll lose the SEC championship game, still get into the college football playoff. And then number 4, I'm going to go Clemson. I know they're a little off the radar this year because it was a down year by Dabo Sweeney standards. It really wasn't a down year all that much. DJ uh, Uyunglele just wasn't ready. He's lost 25 pounds. He's more athletic. They're going to get involved in the running game in a variety of different ways. But Brady knows this. The games are, are won and lost in the trenches. And while, yes, offensively, that might be a, a concern for Clemson, defensively, you're going to put this defensive front up against some of the best that Clemson has ever had. So, yeah, the coordinator changes, certainly something to monitor. But when you can roll too deep along the defensive line and you play in the ACC, then you're in a pretty good spot. So I think Clemson gets in uh, at, at the number four spot. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if you're talking about Ole Miss and Oklahoma State in there sort of on the brink, uh, you know, closing in on the top four spots. All right, let's talk about Ole Miss here for a little bit uh, because we're going through a bet that should be placed right now. I am not good about placing bets this far into the future, but I know I can make a lot of money by doing that. So what bet should we be placing right now? Yeah, Ole Miss over seven and a half regular season wins. And, and when you're looking at some of these, you have to factor in schedule. Obviously, it's a huge deal. Their toughest out-of-conference game is at Georgia Tech. That's four wins right there. Their permanent cross-division uh, opponent in the SEC is Vanderbilt. It's on the road, so their other cross-division game, their rotator is Kentucky, which is at home. Now, Kentucky's going to be pretty solid, but still, that's a pretty easy draw. That's six wins right there. And then... A couple of them are toss-up. I'd say at LSU is a toss-up. I'd say at Arkansas is a toss-up. Mississippi State, a toss-up. I'd go so far as to say even Texas A&M is a toss-up. That's a lot of wiggle room for you to get to over seven and a half wins. So I think the out-of-conference schedule, the fact that Lane has hit the transfer portal, uh, portal uh, not only a lot, but very, very well this offseason, and the fact that some of their tougher games cross division aren't as tough as maybe some other teams will get them to eight wins. All right, let's talk about week one, though, Brady. What bet should we place for week one? I love Purdue taking on Penn State at home, and they're a three-point dog. Take the points. Take Jeff Prom, Brom and Purdue. We know they love upsets to start off the season. This is one where it feels like Jeff Brom and Purdue are building some momentum. Nine wins last season. It's the most he's had during his tenure there at Purdue. They've got eight starters coming back on defense, a defense that only gave up 22 points uh, per game last year, and Aiden O'Connell. Keep an eye out for this young man. It's a prolific offense. They've got a couple transfers to replace what they may be losing in Milton Wright, who's not eligible due to academic issues, but he's going to be a high rise. When we start talking about quarterbacks in the 2023 draft, Keep an eye out for Aiden, uh, Aiden O'Donnell, O'Connell. I'm telling you, he's going to be the guy that's going to start you know, turning some heads, I think, in Big Ten play and creating an upset right out of the gate in West Lafayette. Barrett, 100 days away from the beginning of college football. Week one bet here. You're looking to a certain quarterback uh, continuing to rise to the occasion. No pun intended. No, literally, <laughs> pun intended. I see what you did there. Unintended cam rising for the Utah Utes. Plus one and a half going to Florida. Utah, I think people forget. They're a really good team, consistently a top 10 team. In fact, some of these way too early top 25s has Utah in the top five. And you're telling me they're going to be an underdog in the swamp against an, a Florida team 
that, yeah, while talented, is nowhere near where it should be. Dan Mullen neglected that team from a recruiting standpoint. So from a pure talent perspective, you think Pac-12 versus SEC. Oh, my gosh, the SEC has the advantage. Not really. Not in this one. And when you look at what Utah has built on defense and running the football, they absolutely can do that. Tavion Thomas is back and on a mission as well at running back. So I'll take Utah. You can grab the points, but I don't think you need them. It's only a point and a half anyway. I think the Utes win outright. I love this bet by Barrett, and it's in part because week one, you get a new head coach in Billy Napier, too, kind of taking over, still trying to you know build the culture, build the program. It will be a physical battle. You better put mm-hmm. your big boy pants on when you're playing Utah. So I love this bet. It's a sneaky good one. Get it in now before this line potentially changes so we get closer to the game. I love that we had a whole hour dedicated to college football because it's been a hot minute since we've been able to do that. <laughs> Brady Quinn, Barrett Salee, thank you guys so much. 100 days until college football. Make sure to download and follow the Cover 3 podcast. Latest episode there, by the way, this is your home for everything college football. Latest episode, of course, reaction to the drama we didn't know we needed. Nick Saban's bombshell comments and, of course, Jimbo Fisher's response. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.